G'day ladies and gentlemen, Scotty D here from the Australia's Tabletop Wargaming Network and welcome into the next installment in our series, How to Play Warhammer 40,000 10th Edition. Alrighty ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the ATWM once again for another installment in our How to Play Warhammer 40,000 10th Edition series where we're going to continue to take a look at the core mechanics of the game, having previously looked at the different ways that you can play the game and how to construct um, realists to play games of Warhammer 40,000 as well. Now, as we've been covering the phases of the battle round in our most recent videos, today we'll be looking at the next phase in the battle round, which is the shooting phase and some of the rules around making ranged attacks and how to go about actually determining the results of those attacks you're making against enemy units when you are playing your games for Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. Now we're going to start off by looking at the shooting phase, which is broken up into three different steps and we're just going to be jumping straight on in. So the first step is to select an eligible unit to shoot. Now a unit is only able to shoot once per phase and is eligible to shoot unless any of the following apply. The unit made an advance move this turn or the unit made a fallback move this turn. Now there are some rules that will allow you to advance and shoot or fall back and shoot, but they are gonna be relatively select cases, or we will look to cover those in some different sections in this series as well. Now, after you've selected the unit that you wish to shoot with, you then select your targets for their ranged attacks. Now, before you resolve any attacks, you must select the enemy unit or units, if you're wanting to designate multiple, that will be the targets of all ranged attacks that you are wanting to make with ranged weapons the unit is equipped with. You can select an enemy unit as a target with a model's ranged weapon if at least one model in the firing unit is both within range and is visible to the attacking model. And note that ranges from model to model, not unit to unit, so all models have to be within range to be able to shoot them if you're wanting to shoot all of their weapons. Now, an enemy unit is within range of a weapon if the distance between the attacking model and the range of the attacking weapon is equal to or less than the weapon's range to that enemy unit. If a model has got more than one range weapon, it can shoot both of them at either the same target or different targets. However, there are some other rules around different types of weapons that we'll look at in future videos as well. However, you cannot split attacks of the same ranged weapon across multiple targets from the single model. If a weapon has got more than one profile when you're looking to shoot it, when making ranged attacks, you must choose which ranged weapon profile for that weapon you will be using when making those attacks. Now, before you resolve any attacks, you must declare which models will target an enemy unit with what weapons they are equipped with as well. Now, there is a unit special ability in this section as well called Lone Operative. Now, this ability states that unless this model is a part of an attached unit, i.e. leading a unit, this unit can only be selected as a target of a ranged attack if the attacking model is within 12 inches of it. So this unit ability means that models that are outside of 12 inches of range of the unit with this ability are unable to make ranged attacks against it. Now, once you have selected the targets for all your ranged weapons the unit has got, you then make those ranged attacks. Now, each time a model shoots a weapon, it makes a number of attacks equal to a weapon's attacks characteristic, making one hit roll for each attack being made. And if you have selected more than one target for your ranged weapon attacks, for, from the chosen unit, you must resolve all of those attacks against one unit before moving on to resolving attacks against the another unit that you declared as another target that it is also going to be shooting at. Now, if you are making ranged attacks that use different ranged weapons, then you must resolve all of the attacks using the same weapon before moving on to resolving any other weapons making attacks against the unit. So for example, to simplify this, we are gonna show you a quick example now of how you do go about this and we will resolve those shots that we'll talk a bit more about later on in the video as well. All right, everyone, so we have got a squad of five intercessors and we've also got a squad of 10 Necron Warriors that we're gonna be using to show you how to go about re resolving some shooting attacks here in the shooting phase. So starting off, we're gonna go with the Marines and we're gonna designate them to try and target the Necrons. So we're just gonna check range first off. They do have a 24 inch range, so as you can see, well within 
that range for each of those models and they don't have uh, any of the weapon abilities that require to be within half range so we don't need to worry about that which would normally just be 12 but the necrons are outside of that so they've moved in the previous phase and so now they're just going to be shooting uh, at the necron warriors so they get two shots apiece which means they're actually shooting with 10 shots we've got 10 dice and so we are going to roll uh, to hit. These guys have got a blister skill of three plus, so they're needing three or greater to hit against the Necron Warriors. And of course, I drop one on the ground. So we've actually got here a pretty terrible roll, to be honest. We've got six misses and four hits against the uh, Necron Warriors. So all these attacks then end the attack sequence for them. Then we've got the four wounds that we're going to roll. Necron Warriors are toughness of four. The uh, bolt rifles on the intercessors is a strength of four, which means that we are needing fours to wound against these guys. So we've actually got three wounds and one failed to wound. So that means that that goes into the failed pool. And so we've got the three wounds there, which the Necron Warriors now need to make armor saves on. Now the bolt rifles have got an AP of minus one, which then means their armor save of four plus reduces by one when you make the armor save. So then they have failed all three of their saves, meaning that we actually lose three of the Necron Warriors from the unit from the shooting from the intercessors. Now, if one model in the target unit was visible and within range of the attacking unit when the target unit was selected, that weapon's attacks can still be made against it, even in the event that no models in the target unit are visible to or in range of the firing unit when you go to resolve those attacks. Now, this could be because models in the target unit could have already been destroyed by attacks made with other weapons in the attacking model's unit or in a few other instances as well. Now, there are a few additional rules when it comes to making ranged attacks in the shooting phase. First is around being locked in combat. Now, a unit is not eligible to shoot if it is within engagement range of one or more enemy units. And whilst an enemy unit is within engagement range or one or more of your units, you cannot select them as a target of ranged weapon attacks. However, monster and vehicle keyword units are exceptions to this due to the big guns never tire rule. Monster and vehicle units are eligible to shoot whilst within engagement range of one or more enemy units and can target units they're within engagement range of as targets for ranged attacks with those weapons even though there might be other friendly units within engagement range of the same enemy unit. Now each time they make a ranged attack if it is within engagement range they have a minus one to hit penalty to the hit roll that they make for those attacks unless they are shooting ranged weapons with the pistol keyword that we'll talk a bit more about in future videos as well. Now you can also select monster and or vehicle keyword units as targets of ranged attacks whilst they are within engagement range of one or more friendly units as well. However, they do have a minus one to hit penalty unless you are shooting ranged weapons with the pistol keyword at them as well. However, a unit within engagement range of an enemy vehicle or monster still is unable to shoot at that enemy unit unless it has got ranged weapons with the pistol keyword as well. There is also another unit ability here that units may have, which is the stealth ability. If every model in the unit has this ability, then each time a ranged attack is made against it, the attacking unit has a minus one to hit penalty to the hit roll being made when they are resolving their attacks against the unit. With those extra rules for the shooting phase covered, we're actually gonna discuss how to go about making attacks. And now we've already got one example up there, but we're gonna walk through this process and then we're gonna have a couple of examples as well, particularly when it comes to the vehicle and monster side of things when resolving attacks so you understand how that works as well. Now, making attacks relates to both shooting and fight phase. So bear that in mind that this is gonna be the same process for both phases. Now, making attacks is broken down into five different stages. The first step is the to hit roll. Now, when you make an attack, you roll a D6 for each attack the model is making and you score a hit with a ranged weapon if the result of the hit roll is equal to or greater than the weapon's ballistic skill, which is the BS value. The same goes for when you're making a melee attack, except instead of comparing to the ballistic skill for the hit roll, you compare it to the weapon skill, which is WS, of the melee weapon you are using. 
Now, if the dice result is less than the weapon skill or ballistic skill value, then that attack fails and the attack sequence ends for those attacks. Now, when you are making hit rolls, an unmodified hit roll of a six is called a critical hit and is always successful. And an unmodified hit roll of one always fails to hit. Now, hit rolls can never be modified to be better than more than a plus one or a minus one to hit, and these are cumulative as well. So if you've got multiple instances of plus one to hit or minus one to hit applied at the same time, what you do is you use arithmetic, you do your pluses and your minuses, you figure out what is the appropriate result with all of those benefits. So for example, if a unit has two plus one to hit abilities and a single minus one hit penalty applied to it, then its overall benefit to hit is a plus one to hit. Now the next step is rolling the to wound roll. Now for each hit that you score against the target unit, you make a wound roll by rolling a d6 for each successful hit to see if the attack wounds the target. The result required to be successful when wounding a target is determined by comparing the strength value, which is the S, of the attacking weapon against the toughness, which is the T value, of the target unit's main stat profile. Now, if the strength is double or more than the toughness, then it requires a two plus to wound. If the strength is higher, but not double the toughness, then it is a three plus to wound. If the strength is equal to the toughness of the target unit, then it is a four plus to wound. If the strength is less than, but not half the toughness, then it is five plus to wound. And if the strength is half or less than the toughness, then it requires a six plus to wound there as well. Now, if the result meets the required result to successfully wound the target, then the wound is successful. If not, then the attack sequence ends at that stage. Now, an unmodified wound roll of a six is called a critical wound and is always considered as successful, and an unmodified wound roll of a one is always a failure to wound. Much like hit rolls, wound rolls can never be modified by more than a plus one or a minus one, and you resolve any uh, pluses and minuses in the same way if you've got multiple instances of that as well. Now, after you have resolved the wound rolls, the next step is to allocate attacks. Now, for each successful wound against the target unit, the controlling player allocates which models in the target unit that take that successful wound to then make a save. Now, if a model within the target unit has already taken one or more wounds or has already had attacks allocated to it this phase, you need to continue allocating attacks to that model until it either passes all of its saves or it is dead and then you move on to the next model within the unit. Note that it does not matter if that model is visible or in range or within engagement range of the attacking model when you are allocating those wounds. Now, once the controlling player of the target unit has allocated the attacks, you then make the saving throws for that unit. For each wound that was allocated, you make one saving throw for each attack by rolling a d6. Now, this save could be either the armor save, which is the SV value of the unit, or an invulnerable save, which is sitting on the unit's profile. Now, if you are making a saving throw with the unit's armor save, then you roll a d6 and modify the dice result by the armor penetration value or the AP value of the weapon that is being used. So for example, if a weapon has an AP of minus one, then you reduce your saving throw by one when you are making that roll. Now, if the result is equal to or greater than the armor save characteristic, then the saving throw is successful. Now, if the result of the dice roll is equal to or greater than the armor save characteristic of that unit, then the saving throw is successful and the attack sequence ends. Of course, you have to apply that modifier for AP if there is, but if it is less than the save value, then the save fails and the model suffers damage. An unmodified save throw of a one always fails and a saving throw cannot be improved by more than a plus one at any point in time. Now, bear that in mind that there is no automatic pass on a six because you can actually remove units armor with the AP value of weapons as well. Now, if you are choosing to use an invulnerable save, then you follow the same steps as the armor save process. However, invulnerable saves actually are not modifiable by the AP value of a weapon and units who have an invulnerable save will have it on the front right hand side of the data card as we did discuss in the data sheets. Uh, video earlier in this series. Now, a player is able to choose between either an armor save or an invulnerable save if the option is there. Of course, you are going to want to take the best save that is available to you in that situation. 
Now, after you've made your saving throws, the last step of making attacks is to inflict damage. Now, when a model in the target unit fails a save, they lose a number of wounds equal to the damage characteristic of the attacking weapon. If a model is destroyed by an attack, any excess damage inflicted to the unit is actually lost from that damage. So you can't have a unit that does three damage to a Space Marine Intercessor who's only got two wounds, that extra damage doesn't flow over to the next Intercessor. Now, another form of damage is mortal wounds. Now, some attacks do inflict mortal wounds and when a model takes mortal wounds, you don't make a to wound roll or saving throw, you just allocate mortal wounds like any other attack in the afflict damage step. Unlike normal damage, however, mortal wounds do carry over if the model they are allocated to is destroyed. So you can continue allocating mortal wounds until all models in the target unit are destroyed or all mortal wounds have been allocated. Now, if you inflict mortal wounds and regular damage at the same time, then you resolve all normal damage first. Then after all regular damage has been resolved, you then apply and allocate mortal wounds to that unit. Now, if it's an attack, it does mortal wounds in addition to normal damage, but the model passes its saving throw for the normal damage, the mortal wounds are still inflicted on it. Now, there are also two different abilities that are included in the making attack section that we're going to cover here as well, which is Feel No Pain and Deadly Demise. Now, Feel No Pain is listed as a Feel No Pain X Plus ability on a unit's profile. Each time a model with this ability suffers damage and would lose a wound, including mortal wounds here, roll a d6 for each point of damage that they are taking from the attacks, and for each dice result that is greater than that x value, or equal to that x value, then the wound is not lost. Now, Deadly Demise is also listed as Deadly Demise X ability on units' profile cards, and generally you see it on vehicles or monsters. When a model is destroyed with this ability, you roll a d6 before removing the model. On a 6, each unit within 6 inches of the destroyed model suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the x value, and if it is a random number, then roll separately for each unit that is suffering the damage. Now, after you resolve all the shooting attacks from one unit to the other, then you move on to the next eligible unit when you are wanting to make your shooting attacks. And now we're gonna jump into a few examples to show you how to go about putting all the shooting phase rules and the resolving attacks together in a few different instances, going through the basic shooting attacks as well as dealing with monsters and vehicles whilst within an engagement range as well. Alrighty everyone, so now we are gonna walk through another example, which is how to resolve our split weapons within a unit at different targets. So we've got our three bolt guns in the Death Watch Veterans unit, and then we've also got two frag cannons. So they've got two different ranges and we've got two different targets. We've got three Scarab Swarms as well as the 10 Necron Warriors again. So the bolt guns have got a 24 inch range with no additional rules or abilities on them and everyone's gonna be in range for them. Then the frag cannons are actually 18 inches of range, but have got some additional abilities as well. So there's a couple of different units that they can shoot. So they can shoot at the Warriors or the Scarab Swarms as well. So we're actually gonna to allocate to do the bolters into the uh, Warriors and we're going to do the Frag Cannons into the Scarabs. So we've got six shots that we're going to do the Bolters into the Warriors. These guys, very similar to the Intercessors that we had earlier in the video, these guys do hit on threes. And so we've got three misses there with three hits. And then uh, Strength 4, Wounding on fours, uh, we've got one wound there. And the Necron save is of a four plus. There's no AP on the bolt guns. So we're gonna roll that as well. They make their save there, so they don't take any casualties. Now the now we move on to the two frag cannons that are gonna go into the Scarab Swarms. These guys actually roll uh, D3 shots per model. So they've actually got uh, two of them. They're two D3 shots, which is gonna be three shots from one and one shot from the other. So it's gonna be four shots total. Now these guys, these guys are going to be hitting on fours against the uh, against the scarabs. We get two hits there. Now this is strength seven, neg one uh, AP, and two damage per. So these are going to be wounding on twos because the scarabs are only toughness of two. 
Uh, so both of them wound. Uh, and then the Scarabs have only got a six up save. So it does actually get ignored. And one of the bases is destroyed. And that's how you go about resolving all the shooting attacks against one unit. Then you follow through and resolve all the shooting attacks against another with multiple weapons that you are using from a unit. Alrighty, so now we're going to show you what it looks like to shoot from a vehicle that is in close combat at other units that aren't in close combat. Uh, obviously, this can work in the reverse as well. So we've got the Redemptor Dreadnought here that is going to be in range of those Lich Guard that he is able to shoot at. He is also then allowed to shoot at the unit he is in close combat with as well. So he's got four different weapons. He's got... Uh, Dual Storm Bolter that is twin linked. Uh, he's got the Macro Plasma Incinerator, the Icarus Launcher, and then the Onslaught Gatling Cannon that we're going to resolve. So we'll start off by declaring his weapons. Now he can declare them into different targets. So we're going to do the Plasma Cannon into the Lich Guard with also the Icarus Rocket Pod into them as well. And then we're going to do the Onslaught Gatling Cannon and the Storm Bolter into the Scarab Swarm. So we'll start off with the Storm Bolter. Now it does have the Rapid Fire ability on it and it is going to be firing into the Scarab. So rapid fire is if you're within half range, you get an additional number of shots. Normally it's only got the two shots and it is rapid fire too. So it's going to have four shots in total. Now against the Scarabs, it's going to be minus one to hit because he is in close combat with them. So he does get two hits and two failures against the uh, Scarab Swarms with the Storm Bolter. Now these are at strength four, toughness two on the Scarab Swarm, so it is gonna be wounding on twos. Both will wound, uh, and then the Scarabs make their six up saves. They both fail. So one of those Scarab Swarms is down to two wounds. Then you've got the uh, Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which is eight shots. These will be hitting on fours once again. So we've got four misses and four hits there and so we'll then need twos to win with these guys but sixes will have devastating wounds and what devastating wounds is it's one of the weapon abilities we'll cover in a future video but these attacks actually ignore armor and invulnerable saves if they successfully wound with a critical wound so we've got no critical wounds there we have got three wounds these are at no ap so the scarabs are going to make three armor saves now because we've already got two wounds taken off one of the scarabs we have to allocate the first two wounds to go there uh, and then the next one will go across from there so we'll start off with those two they've got a six up save which fails so that scarab's one will die from those shooting and then you've got the other one which will fail putting that next scarab swarm down to three wounds so then we've got the icarus launcher which is going to do d3 shots into the lich guard and it rolls a five which is three shots uh against them uh so this is also going to be hitting on uh fours against them so all three hit however this is a strength eight ap one two damage weapon so ap minus one i should say so uh three hits there uh so the lich guard are uh, toughness five and they've got minus one to wound so uh from their ability so it means that normally we need threes reducing that by one meaning that we need fours to wound against the lich guard here so we only get one successful wound it means the lich guard are going to be making a four up save now that can either be armor save of a three plus reduced by one or an invulnerable save of four plus so either way it's going to be the same save at this time and it means that they are going to actually lose one of the Lich Guard from the Icarus Launcher. Then we're going to be doing the Macro Plasma Incinerator. Now this one is D6 plus one shots uh, against the Lich Guard. And it's going to get five shots total. So we've got the four from the dice result and plus the one from the actual weapon itself. Uh, not going to overcharge it, so the profile on it is strength eight, neg three, two damage per, uh, per shot that gets through. So we're hitting on fours with these. So we get two hits and three failures. So those two, those three go away from the pool, those two hits. Uh, we are then, again, it's only strength eight, so normally it'd be threes because they are toughness five, but it's gonna be fours because of the minus one to wound against them. 
and we get no wounds from the Macroplasma Incinerator against the Lich Guard. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you resolve shooting a, with a unit that is in close combat. Of course, you can do the reverse, and it's still going to be minus one to hit the unit in close combat if you're shooting at them from a unit that is not in close combat with them as well. Alrighty, now once you have made all of your shooting attacks with all eligible units in your army that you wish to do so, then you can move on to the next phase in the battle round and continue playing your game of Warhammer 40,000. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for our next installment in our How to Play Warhammer 40,000 10th Edition series talking about the shooting phase and making attacks with both ranged weapons and melee weapons, as well as it's the exact same process for both of those styles of attacks in the game. We hope it was nice and clear and that those examples did help clarify how to go about doing those various ranged attacks and the attacks process as well when you are making them. Now, if you do want to keep up to date with the content we are creating here on the Australis Tabletop Wargame Network, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell if you enjoy this video, feel free to drop a like. And if you have any feedback on these style of videos with the examples and such as well, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I always love hearing your guys' feedback and how to improve the content we are creating here as well. Or if you did enjoy it, just leave your favorite emoji as well because engagement. But if you do want to catch us live and you have any other questions you want to ask, feel free to come over to the Astralis Tabletop Wargaming Network as Astralis TWN over on Twitch, where you can hang out during our hobby sessions. We'll also have the Australian South Pacific ITC snapshots every month, as well as tournament previews, tournament live coverage, and such from the Australian Southeastern Seaboard as well throughout the year. And we've got some big tournaments coming up, so it's going to be really important that you're following us over on the Twitch channel so that you're able to catch the live action as we come to the back end of the 2023 ITC season. And if you do want to financially support us, feel free to check out our Ko-Fi page where you can support us for as little as five or 10 Australian dollars a month. You can buy some ATWN merch or you can get some coaching, whether that's monthly or one-off coaching sessions as well. I want to thank everyone that is supporting us via Ko-Fi as well as our Twitch subscribers as well. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.